hi it's sandy with esfernel arts today i am going to be doing a painting of a feather the prompt for today is feather from the world watercolor group nature series for february and i'm going to start off with a little bit of instruction and then move on to speed painting from there so i have i'm using i'll have all the materials listed in the description and so my first step is to and i mentioned i'm using b paper right b cold press watercolor paper um, i looked up feathers and i i don't really want to copy anybody's feather so i'm just going to i know the general shape of a feather you know it comes around here and looks a little like a bowling pin i'm gonna have it bigger on this side a little bit rounded here and maybe want it a little bit on this side, kind of like that. And then the inside, I'm just going to draw two lines. So it's going to come around here and like that. And then another one like that. And a little like that. And um, have a little bit of the down here and that's it I think for the watercolor pencil all right I am going to just wet this I wet the feather I don't want too much water in and then I'm just going to mix up I'm using cadmium yellow, the pyro red, so to get a little bit of an orange there. And then I'm coming in and getting some of the sepia. And that, instead of having orange, gives me that kind of that beigey tan, nice suede look. And then I'll adjust it, the colors as I see fit. So I think I'll just come down around here. If I think it's too yellow, I'm gonna just take it much more red. And then I'm going to take whatever colors I put in the feather and come down and add those on and off to this little downy part here. And I'm just taking the, this is um, my no name, probably number 10 size round. And I am just going to get some wider pieces of down. And eventually I'll go back in and get a little bit uh, finer brush. I'll probably use a little bit of all right, then I'm going to use my cobalt teal, and I'm just going to come in here and let that run right in, nice and wet right there, and it will run right in to the tan. I decided I want this to be nice and loose, and so staying in those lines, Side of the lines before it dries. So I turn off the blue dryer here and give it just a little bit less perfect, the perfect form. Let me dry this. So it's important to make sure you dry the first layer before you go on to the next layer. So that your first wash should be completely dry before you go on to the next one, or you'll end up causing yourself blooms and runs and things that you don't necessarily want. All right, so I wet the whole feather and I wet down along the bottom because I want this to be nice and loose. I'll do some splattering. I want some of the colors to run in to each other. So I dried, I painted the first wash, I dried it, and this is the second wash. I want to put a lot of color in here and kind of let it run and do its thing. Gotta let the cat in. It's 30 degrees out there.
All right, and to be honest, I was spacing out a little, and I'm not exactly sure how I got this bloom there, and I don't like that that much, but I can fix it, I think. And another thing I decided is I might want to add just a little bit more, another color in to this cobalt teal. I'm going to do another layer of it without the blue, but this is the anthroquinone blue. I might add a little bit more and darken it up. Uh, I want to see how this works. So I think I'm going to try a little wet on dry and get some colors now in here. I think that's the ticket and I might not need the ant blue as I like to call it because I really don't know that word that well and I don't want to say it and mispronounce it. So I want to deepen this turquoise and I'm going to use what would be the sort of the direction of the actual parts of the feather. So I'm sure they have a name and of course I didn't look it up, but I might. But I wanna to begin to give that look. So I'm actually almost dry brushing. I'm coming in, I'm getting pure pigment off my palette it's slightly wet with a, sl a damp brush and I'm using the side of it to go ahead and get some dry brush up there so that I can give the look of the individual parts of the feather. And I'm going in the direction that they would go in. And then I'm going to do the same down here, but if I do it now while it's wet, I risk having problems and blooms and things. So I think I'll come back to that and I'll do the same thing for the tan colors. All right, let's see what happens when we begin to do that. All right, that's, that's actually, I like that actually. It's a little darker than I had started with, but I kind of am liking it. So again, I'm doing the dry brush. Now here's the middle part of the feather. And this actually kind of looks like the color of the watercolor pencil I used. So that is fine. Both sides of this. Now at this point I'm going to switch to my number eight Grumbacher. I could go even smaller, but I think this will do the job. So I'm going to wet that down and then I want to come over and get some fine lines up here before I go to marker. So I have to be careful it's not too wet. I'll do a trial one down here. But I can get much finer lines. I saw how this broke up. I didn't like that. So I'll move to this brush and I'll be happy with that for a little bit. I kind of like the way that looks. Now I could come in with a rigger if I really wanted a lot of detail on here. I could come in with a rigger. Where is he? But I just don't know that I want to do all that. Where's my rigger? Come on, buddy, I just had you. I don't know, I took a little hike. Whatever. Oh, there it is, under the palette. Okay, so come in here, I wet my rigger, I pull in, let's just start with the turquoise, and I'll just do one or two. He lives a nice long line, it's perfect for feathers. I'm gonna load it up with paint, and I'll put number eight down. And let's just say I wanted one down here so I could do this and I could come in and just add lots and lots of details, but that's not what this particular feather was supposed to be about today. However, I can put a few more in. 
And again, it's that delicate dance of the right amount of water that was too dry. So I'll go back over it, but I want it to look spontaneous. So I don't want to get too wrapped up in this. All right, and then this is nice. The rigger is really nice for coming down here and putting in these little fuzzy down parts of the feather. I'm going to give a little attention to the inside part. I'm going to give it some more color. I'm coming back in with my Micron, this is the 05, and I'm just going to do, draw some loose, everything's nice and dry. All right, at this point I'm switching out for my 08, because I do think that that will do a better job. I can see this is catching a little bit on this paper. I'm not gonna go back over that. Um, in fact, I think I'll do a few of the fives down here for balance. You can see I'm just I'm making some just some rough squiggly outlines. All right, I'm gonna move to the eight and see how that works. And the last thing I'm going to do is just come over and get some color and do a little splattering. A very wet brush. I'm going to take off a little. Move this up. My husband's always giving me a hard time about wearing these ratty old sweatshirts when it's cold and I'm painting, but especially from taping. But you know, I'm splattering paint. I don't want to wear my good clothes. So when you see the paint stains in the holes, it's good painting clothing. I kind of wish I had done a little bit more there. I think I'm just going to do just, just a touch more there for balance. And, I don't know, I could just feel aesthetically it was too much on this side. I don't want to bring too much up, but I feel like it needs a little, just a tiny bit more. And this is where I get myself into trouble because I never know when to quit. But, you know, when you feel something's not right, there we go. I just kind of get that in there and a little up here and a tiny bit up there. And I think I am going to quit that all right, went back. So I went back and looked at this, and I don't like that this is sort of aqua, aqua, tan, tan. That is not what I had intended, and I don't think I really, I, you always need to step back and take a look at what's going on. Well, you should anyway, I do, um, because when I went back to look at it, I was like, yeah, that's not what I meant to do. So I'm coming back in and just very quickly, I don't have my mic on or anything, I'm just going to add more aqua down here just to balance it out. Oh, my cat is bugging me. He doesn't eat for another hour, but he doesn't seem to get that. So yeah, I wanted more aqua there. So I can pull a little out there. And definitely a little more aqua up here. I also noticed that the first part of this video is in portrait format, which I hate. My phone just is such, gives me such a hard time when it comes to staying in landscape mode. 
So I hope you'll forgive the beginning part of that. It's very short and I'm speeding through it, but it still bothers me that it's in portrait mode. I thought I had it right, but there's always something. Let's blame the cat. It's probably his fault. All right, I like that a little better. I feel like so I would do one more bit of cobalt teal, and since I have so much of it coming out of the cap, I think I'm just gonna grab it from that and not even squeeze it on my palette. Hopefully I can get that out of there. You can see what I'm doing, it's all squeezing out. Did I not just talk about this sweatshirt being so ratty? But, you know, it does what I need it to, so. All right, I added a tiny bit of that anthra, anthraquinone blue. I just want a little something darker there, so just a little just to help me fight that um, tan. Here, I thought this was gonna be quick. These things are never as quick as you think. These um, speeded up videos, you know, it, it might post in 10 minutes, but it takes you an hour or more to do the actual painting. So, I usually speed them up eight times faster and um, just wanna remind everybody you can slow it down in YouTube, I don't know how, but I know that you can. <laughs> I'm not sure how. I just Google everything and find out that way. All right, I'm adding just this little bit, little bit of darker with my quinacridone teal, making it a mess. But I want to do a little more splattering, and I wanted a little bit of that ant blue mixed in, just to give me. See, that just is so much better. Also, when I go back and watch my videos on the computer and even on the TV, but mostly on the computer, they never look as good. The color just doesn't pick up as much as when I'm here doing it in person. So keep that in mind. Like if I do a paint review, I'm saying how amazing the paints are, and then I look at it on my computer and I'm like, well, it doesn't look quite as amazing as all that. But, but actually, the actual swatch looks really good okay i really like that darker i think it helps tie in with the pen and ink and you know that was one of those things it's important when you're painting take a step back go pet your cat feed your cat do something take a step back come back and look at it and say does it feel finished that i like so much more than when i wrapped it up the first time so i'll edit out that wrap up and make this my actual wrap and uh, maybe I'll even sign it for a change. I never sign anything. Well, it's not dry. Yeah, I just never sign anything anymore because I know I'm doing it for this purpose. They're right down there. Um, and so it's just staying with me. I'm not trying to sell this or anything. All right. Thanks again for watching. Please forgive the portrait format for the first few minutes. And um, join me tomorrow when the prompt will be... I can't remember, but um, it's on World Watercolor Group if you need to know. Otherwise, see you tomorrow, and thanks for watching.